Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 81. In this training tutorial, we're gonna take an overview of tuning a rotary engine based on a sample calibration file. We're gonna cover all the key aspects and details so that you're able to successfully dial in and tune a rotary engine. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at working with tuning a rotary engine using our Haltech Elite and our NSP software in this training tutorial. Now the purpose of this tutorial is to get familiar with the things that differ or deviate from a piston engine tuning a rotary engine. There are a couple key things we need to pay attention to that will really make a big difference on how the engine actually runs. We'll be going through this sample calibration file. This is a tune file that I personally calibrated on a two rotor RX-7 and it was on pump gas, uh, single turbo, upgraded fuel system, uh, upgraded coil packs, everything here was updated and uh, configured so that the engine ran as well as possible. This particular engine was peripheral port so it pulled very little engine vacuum and I actually calibrated this engine using the Alpha N strategy. So we're going to be talking about how we fit that in here to the calibration uh, setup and strategy and how I went about dialing things in here. but. Again, the takeaway here is learning the key tables and the key things we need to pay attention to for a rotary engine. The tuning and calibration process is identical between a rotary and a piston engine with only a few small differences. So if you've never tuned a rotary engine, we'll go through some of those details that you'll need to know here. Hopefully we will have a live training tutorial using a rotary engine in some type of vehicle. I'm gonna to try to locate another third gen RX-7. I actually did a really in-depth live training tutorial in the ESP Haltech Elite training course. You can always check that out uh, if you're a subscriber. Um, you can go ahead and, and look at that specific tutorial and watch the process from start to finish. But essentially, I'm gonna be taking the highlights out of that tutorial and just putting them in here. And again, hopefully we'll have another vehicle that I can use for filming purposes so we'll be able to actually include that here in the NSP course. Let's jump in here and take a look at some of these details that we need to know and get familiar with this calibration file. Now this calibration file is provided to you in the training course folder. So let's go ahead and just take a look at that real quick. If we go to file, we'll go to open and we can go here. I have my folder that I've downloaded from the website. So we can see our Haltech NSP course. That's all of the subfolders. We're gonna go into the sample calibration files and open up our RX-7 Alpha N calibration file. Now this file, is this tune file that you're able to open up on your end, follow along here on screen. You can even use this as a reference point for tuning a rotary engine. Now a three rotor will vary slightly in some of the settings, but what we have here configured should still apply to a three rotor engine. Doesn't matter even if it's a four rotor engine, it's just some of those details in terms of some of the configuration programming values that we need to put into our navigation area here into our main area that we need to account for depending on how many rotor engine we have. All right, let's jump in here and take a look at a few things. We're gonna go move from our fuel tuning page over into main. Let's go into our setup here and let's start to take a look at these details. So the first thing we're gonna find under engine configuration for a rotary engine, the engine capacity. If it's a two rotor engine, this will be programmed here at 1.308 liters. So as your rotors increase, your displacement or engine capacity will increase as well. So we'll have to keep note of that. Now the engine type here has to be set to rotary so the Haltech understands it's controlling a rotary engine. The number of cylinders or rotors here is two. Two rotor engine, we put two there for a value. Max cranking RPM that would be similar to a piston engine, 380 is fine. The user demand minimum throttle limits, I would set this to 1%. This makes sure that the idle control and the decel over and fuel cut, everything's gonna be performing exactly how we'd like so I'd like to put a value, a value here of about 1%. Now under the engine geometry configuration, we'll have cylinder one is one, cylinder two is two, and then bank info one and one. You don't need to do anything different there. Um, all right, let's go in here and drop down in our menu. Now the trigger system for this particular engine, it was fitted with a Hall effect sensor, falling edge, we can see all these details here, the pull up has been enabled, and the pattern was an RX-8 pattern. We can see in this case, it's a 36, one gap of two missing teeth, so it's a 36-1 trigger wheel. This was fit with an aftermarket crank trigger kit. Now with a rotary engine, we don't have a home or a cam sync, so we see the home signal is not populated. 
because there isn't a cam to actually reference the TDC position on a rotary engine. So that's not accounted for here. We only have this trigger signal. Now we do have all the other details here for this particular trigger pattern, the way that the wheel was mounted on the engine. We found a TDC angle using a timing light here of 64 degrees. This will be possibly different on your engine if you're dealing with an OEM RX. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.